1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16-18 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We know the rapture is approaching at an astronomical speed. When we look at the world around us, we can see that the stage is set for the rapture, and not only for the rapture, but for the events in which that are spoken of within the book of Revelations. The rapture is an event that is mentioned in the Bible, and it is a time when the Lord will come to take his people home. Now, today I want to speak of one of the most sobering elements of the rapture. And this sobering element is that there will be no final warning before it happens. It will be a sudden event that will catch many off guard, and they will have no time to prepare for it. That is a sobering thought. That is a sobering thought. And I am preaching this message to provoke you to think. I am preaching this message to provoke you to examine your life. I am preaching this message to get you to contemplate the sudden nature of the rapture. You will not get a strange sense about you that something is going to happen. The rapture will be a sudden event, and there will be no prior warning 10 minutes before the rapture. What this tells me is that people will be living their lives as usual. They will be going about their day-to-day -day activities, not realizing that one of the most significant events in human history is about to occur. This is a sobering thought, my brothers and sisters. It is a reminder that we must always be prepared for the rapture, as we do not know when it will happen. Now, many people wonder how long it will take for the rapture to take place. The Bible tells us that it will happen in the twinkling of an eye. But what does that mean? The quote, twinkling of an eye, is a phrase that refers to a very short amount of time. It doesn't refer to the time it takes you to blink. In fact, it is estimated that the twinkling of an eye lasts only about one-tenth of a second. This means that the rapture will happen very quickly, and we will be taken up to be with the Lord before we even realize what has happened. It will be literally instantaneous. So back to the theme of this message. There will be no final warning before the rapture. There will be no change in weather patterns before the rapture takes place. There will be no cosmic events in the heavens before the rapture takes place. There will be no opportunity to get right with the Lord before the rapture takes place. It will be sudden. Therefore, do you know what this tells me? This tells me that people will be living their normal lives. People will be living their day-to-day -day experiences. Adulterers will be committing adultery. Fornicators will be committing fornication. Liars will be lying. The sexually immoral will be committing sexual immorality. The proud will be walking towards destruction. Those who are involved with lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulsions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, will be doing just that. And in the same breath, those who are the sheep of God, those who know His voice, those who love the Lord and obey His commands, will be doing just that. They will be walking with Him, just as Enoch walked with God and was taken away, and they too will be taken away. The Bible tells us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It does not say, work for your salvation, but rather, work it out. In other words, be serious with it. Treat it with the seriousness it deserves, and those who will be taken in the rapture will be doing just that. They will be working out their salvation with fear and trembling. So this is my question for you today. How are you living your life today? What is the day-to-day -day activities of your life? Are you a person who, like Job, can be described as upright and blameless? Or are you someone who has a secret life, a secret life that no one knows about? Are you like Moses, who is described as a servant of the Lord? Or are you self-seeking and self-centered? When the rapture takes place, people will be doing what they always do. 
Those who go out to immoral clubs on a regular basis will be doing what they always do. Those who fellowship in the house of the Lord on a weekly basis will be doing what they always do. Those who live secret lives will be living their secret lives. Those who are upright and are looking for the coming of the Lord will be doing just that. So, allow me to ask you this question. What is your day-to-day -day life? The Bible tells us that there are two things a Christian should be doing in their day-to-day -day life. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Peace with all people and holiness is something that can be pursued, followed, chased, and sought after. And if your conscience is speaking to you right now, listen. If you are not right with the Lord, listen to your conscience as it speaks to you. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. The concept of Jesus at the door pertains to both sinners and saints equally. Jesus desires to enter into our lives and establish a relationship with us. No matter what your sin is today, no matter what pit of sin you are in today, regardless of the filth and worldliness you are involved in today, right now, Jesus is knocking at your door today. You haven't committed the unforgivable sin. Why are you avoiding God? Ask for forgiveness. He is a God that forgives. Why are you avoiding Him? Why are you living in uncertainty regarding the rapture when you can speak to your Lord right now, wherever you are, and ask for forgiveness and place your faith in the finished work of Christ Jesus on the cross? God does not need nine business days to forgive you of your sins. Right now, wherever you are, you can call to Him. Let us stop looking at the sudden nature of the rapture for a moment and look at how suddenly a person can leave this world. Do you know how suddenly we can leave this world and be standing before the Lord? Do you know how fragile we are? How quick this life can end? It can be sudden. The truth is that we are incredibly fragile creatures. Our bodies can be here one second and gone the next. And this is something that we need to be mindful of at all times. The truth is death is not an accident, but rather an appointment. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. However, no one knows when their appointment is. So, this sermon goes beyond being applicable to the day of the rapture. It can be applicable to life in general, for none of us know when our last day on this earth will be, or how long we have left. How are we living our lives? Now, for the rest of this sermon, I want to encourage and comfort you because the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is a powerful statement from the Apostle Paul, and it has a deep meaning for all of us. The context of this verse is important. In the preceding verses, Paul is talking about the rapture of the living saints and the resurrection of the dead. He tells the Thessalonians that those who have died in Christ will rise again and be reunited with him. This was a message of hope for the early Christians who were facing persecution and hardship. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 54. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. The truth is, that when the time of the rapture comes, we will be changed, but the change will be removing the old self, the earthly self, and we will be given a glorious body. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 through 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our old self would be changed, and that is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53. For the perishable must be clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. What a wonderful promise that is! Can you imagine having a body that is no longer subject to the effects of time and aging? A body that is free from disease and sickness, pain and suffering. A body that is perfectly suited for the eternal life that God has prepared for us. This new body you will have will not have any sickness. Isn't that amazing? If you have ever struggled with your health, you will know how wonderful this will be. I've seen people go down the long corridor of deterioration. When bit by bit they begin to lose their faculties and layer by layer they are stripped of their health, that's what sickness can do. But this body will have no sickness, no pain, no sickness, no deterioration, no medicine required, no hospitals required. If you are a young man or a young woman who is 100% healthy, this won't truly excite you like someone who has suffered with their health or someone who has seen their body age and deteriorate and not do what it used to be able to do. The Bible tells us that our bodies are currently subject to decay and mortality, but that in Christ, we have the promise of a new and perfect body. So, brothers and sisters, let us look forward with great anticipation to the day when we will receive our new glorified bodies. Let us live our lives with the knowledge that this world is not our home and that we have a glorious future ahead of us. And let us encourage one another with the hope that we have in Christ, knowing that nothing in this world can compare to the wonderful new body that awaits us in heaven. Look forward to the rapture. Live each day as if you will see the Lord today. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord.